Scripture reading today of God's Word is in John 9 through 14. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was not made through him, the world did not recognize him. For he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born, not of natural descent, or of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen the glory, the glory of the One and Only, who comes from the Father, full of grace and truth. So be it. Father, we do thank you so much for sending the light into the world, for sending love instead of judgment that we deserve, for giving us mercy, for giving us grace that we could be called children of God, that we could have hope, love, joy, and peace that only come through Jesus Christ. As we're here today to honor the birth of our Savior and Lord, Lord, just help us to remember how much that you love us and what the sacrifice that was made by you and made by Jesus for us. We just thank you and praise you for your ways are perfect and true. We thank you so much that Jesus would give up his life for us. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So what is Christmas? It is, of course, the day that we recognize our Savior's birth, right? Some people are proud to say Merry Christmas. Other people want to say Happy Holidays. But regardless, people today are recognizing the birth of Jesus Christ whether they want to realize it or not, whether they want to say they are or not, whether they believe or not, the world kind of stops. And you can go up Highway 95 today and you're like, where is everyone? Because the world kind of stops. Because that's what happened when Jesus came into this world. The world was kind of quiet and silent till the heavens broke and proclaimed the Word of God, that the light had come to this earth, that peace and joy had come to men. That we just have to accept what God has done for us. Because there's no way on our own, no way that we could ever get to God. It's impossible. We're sinful creatures. So He sent Jesus to us to be a man, to take our place. And Jesus did just that. He led, led the sinless, lived the sinless life. And He took our place. He took all of our sin, all of our shame upon His shoulders. As long as we would believe. So that's what we celebrate on Christmas, that love came, that light came to this earth. We think so many times that this earth is a terrible, wicked place because of the things that we see on the news and everything else. But just imagine what it would be like if God <coughs> did not continue to love us. If He wasn't faithful and true and sent His Son to do what only His Son could do. You might realize it, you might not, but Christmas really is Christmas which we're celebrating the death of Jesus just as much as we're ever celebrating His birth. Because Jesus came to die. That was God's plan. He came to die for you and for me. To pardon us from our sin. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the only way, the only truth, the only life. God loved us so much that despite how the world was at that time, it was just as bad a place as it ever is now. Things don't change. Men are evil. But God is a loving, kind God that wants to pardon anyone and everyone, no matter what sins you've committed. Jesus died for the most wicked of all, and He died for the, the ones that we think are the most perfect of all. Because even the most perfect have sinned and fall short of God's glorious standard. But Jesus didn't. Jesus came and took our place. Wow, what a reason to celebrate. It's a time of great joy so that we can say, Merry Christmas. Say it. Merry Christmas. 
Because it is Mary. It is Mary to even be talking about Christ's death. Because without His death, we could never have life, could we? We could not be pardoned. We would be pitiful and wretched, naked and blind. But Jesus died for us and He said, Just take on my robes of righteousness. Take the light that I have and spread that light to the world. In Luke chapter 2, we read the gospel account. And I'm going to read this from the King James Version just because I think it's more elegant, so I like it better for Christmas. It says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now maybe you think about it, maybe you don't think about it, but that great joy which shall be to all people, I constantly think about. Whenever I think about myself being better than someone else, I realize that I am the worst of all when I think that. Because God loves each and every one of us. How could I ever look down on one of His precious creation? We're all sons and daughters of the Most High, as long as we will accept that and come back to Him. He created us because He wanted to have a relationship with us. He continued to passionately pursue us because He wanted to. Paul tells us about love, that it's patient and kind, that it keeps no records of wrongs. It's a choice and a decision that we make. And God chose to love each and every one of us. Enough that He would send His only Son to this earth to be born in a lowly manger, to live a life where He would be persecuted, and then that He would be beaten and nailed upon a cross to die for our sins. That's how much God loves us. This was the greatest news that could ever be imagined. So the heavens opened up and told of the glories of this light that was coming to earth, this baby boy that would be born in a manger. It might have been hard to accept. It might be hard to understand now, but it's true regardless. I don't understand how and why the sun shines, but it does. And I'm thankful for it because I know that God is in control. I know He knows all these things. And I know that He loves me enough that no matter whether I fully understand it or not, I just have to accept it. And if I accept that love through Jesus Christ, then I can be His very own child. <laughs> Not just be redeemed from sin, but be His own child. It is the greatest news that could ever be imagined. There's something that we should definitely rejoice and sing praises for. In a little bit, we're going to get to sing more Christmas songs, and you're going to get to pick them out, so maybe we'll sing your favorite. Great joy is available for all. What do you got to do? John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but instead have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of God's only Son. Wow, that God would love us enough to send His Son to be born to die. So we celebrate the birth of Christ because we celebrate the death of Christ. And we have the resurrection of Christ that gives us hope that we know that all of these things that, that we've been told will come true. That we know that we will have life eternal. That death has no sting for, for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Because, not because of what we've done, not because of who we are or what we've accomplished, but simply because what we believe, because what Jesus has done. So do you have any Christmas traditions? If you don't have some Christmas traditions, and I'm sure each of you do, I'd like to maybe bring one that, to the table today that you're doing or maybe that's new. And that's a part of giving and loving and recognizing who Jesus is. So we're going to talk about some of the names of Jesus. But Jesus said in Acts 20, 35, It is more blessed to give than receive. See, in the world today, we think about commercialism at Christmas time. We think about what it gives us. And we did get the greatest gift of all. We got Jesus. But He said for us to give to others, that we're supposed to share this thing called grace. That instead of condemnation, instead of punishment, we get mercy and forgiveness. And then we get grace beyond what we could ever imagine 
because He lavishes His love so much on us and takes us as His very own child. Wow. And we're supposed to share that grace, to share that light with the world. In John chapter 13, Jesus has the Last Supper with His disciples. It's a time that He longed to spend with His disciples to spend some lasting, loving relationships, to give them some final instructions. But He loved them. He loved them enough He was going to lay down His life for them. Even though Judas was going to betray Him. Even though John and James are going to argue about who was going to be the greatest. Even though Peter would deny Him. He just loved His disciples. And He loves each and every one of us. And He goes on, on into John chapter 14 and says in verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by Me. Remember that, because the world tells us there's many ways to Jesus, or it doesn't matter. Good people are good people. Bad people are bad people. These are all lies from Satan. Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life. If that was not true, why would God send His Son to die for us? Surely there would be another way. But God sent His Son because He is the only way, the only truth, the only life. If we read on in John verse, chapter 14, verse 25 through 27, read, All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. If you don't have that peace then all you've got to do is believe. Jesus Christ came. He's still here today. He's living just as He was when He rose again. He's just in heaven preparing a place for us. And that's what Jesus was telling His disciples. He said, don't be afraid. I'm not going to leave you orphan. I'm going to go prepare a place for you. I'm going to ask the Father to send the Advocate, to send God Himself in the person of the Spirit to be with you every single day. Something that the Old Testament saints would have just literally died for. They would have longed for it. You get the Spirit of God living in you? We have such a gift. And we have such a responsibility to tell others. In chapter 15, verse 8 through 11 says, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. Showing yourselves to be my disciples, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. We just read about the peace that we only get from Jesus. We, we lit the candles in anticipation of this. We just read about the joy. Not just joy that we can have one day a year, but joy that we can have every day of our lives, no matter what the circumstances are. Peace that we can have, that no matter what happens to us, that we're going to spend an eternity with God. So we've lit the Christ candle today, and I want to talk about some of the names of Jesus. And I've only got three children here today, so you guys get all of my attention. Okay, whether you want it or not. So... Sherry and I put up a new tree this year because she likes to put up a tree at Thanksgiving. And I like to say no <laughs> because we live in a log home and we put that tree up in front of our fireplace. So I don't want it to dry out and burn down our home. So we made a compromise. We bought an artificial tree this year with white lights and we're only decorating it with Jesus ornaments, with Christian ornaments. We're going to do another tree also to bring in Santa Claus and other things that we might like to do. But we want a tree that just we can concentrate on worshiping who Jesus Christ is. That God would send His Son. The words that are on these ornaments tell the meanings of what Jesus is. He has so many names because He does so many things for us. More than we could ever, ever possibly imagine. So will you girls help me or not? Okay, come up here and you can help me. And I burnt these in the wood for you guys, so you can help me. What is the first one that we're going to do? Jesus. Jesus, right? Jesus is His name, right? Scripture says He'll be called this or that, but then the angel said, and you shall name Him Jesus. 
Luke 1.31 says, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call his name Jesus. But that's the Greek version of it. The Hebrew version is, I'll try to pronounce it right, but Yeshua. Did I do it good enough, Bob? Yeshua. Yeshua. Or Joshua, which means God saves. <clears throat> Jesus will be our salvation. He is the only way, the only truth, the only life. God sent a way for us to be saved from our sin, from our shame, from the death and destruction that we would face. He did exactly what He said He would do because He loves us. He's perfect in every way. And we call Him by the name of Jesus. In Matthew 1, verse 18 to 21, we read, This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus because He will save His people from their sins. What's that one say? Savior. Savior. Luke 2.11 says, Today in the town of David a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus is our Savior. He is our salvation. He is our Deliverer. No other way, no other name written among men whereby ye must be saved. Jesus Christ is the only way. Okay, this one's a little more difficult. What does it say? Let me help you. Horn of Salvation. That's a weird name, isn't it? Luke 1, 68-71 says, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because He has come to His people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David as he said through his holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies. So what is the word talking about here? Is it a musical horn? It says, as the prophets say, so if we go back and study Old Testament Scripture, maybe we can figure that out. And more than likely you'll come up with, it's the horn like of the wild ox, because it's his salvation. The wild ox is a mighty strong animal, but what delivers the final blow is His horn that brings Him victory. And Jesus is our horn of salvation. He is our victory, our strength. God sent Him to do what we could never do, to set things right between God and man. Acts 4.12 says, and it uses the same word, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So this one has two sides. What's the M word? Messiah. That is from Hebrew. Messiah is only found in one place in the Old Testament. Did you know that? Probably not. You probably thought it was found in several places. In Daniel 9, 24 through 26a, it says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to, furnish the, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of, this, of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah. Every other time in the Old Testament it's translated as anointed, which is what Messiah means. But here it's translated as Messiah. The prince shall be seven weeks, and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall even in troublesome times. And after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. The word means anointed. We get our Greek word that we'll talk about in a minute from the Hebrew word Messiah. It means anointed or set apart for a particular purpose, for God's purpose, to bring salvation to men. A part that was set aside to Jesus that no one else could do. Only Jesus could bring salvation to mankind. 
<coughs> Daniel predicted this hundreds of years, and he predicted it with incredible accuracy of the time. So much so that so many scholars said Daniel must have been written after the fact. At least those parts of Daniel must have been added in, because no one can foretell the future with that much accuracy. No one except who knows the future, who holds it in the palm of his hands and tells it to us. God told the words to Daniel, and he predicted with amazing uh, accuracy of exactly when Jesus would come and that he would come to die for our sins. <clears throat> Matthew gives the lineage of Jesus through Joseph. In Matthew 1.16 it says, And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah, recognizing the Old Testament Scriptures. On the other side of that ornament is Christ, because that is the Greek word for Messiah, Christ. John 1.41 says, The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. Because that's who they had been looking for, the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. The one who was anointed, the one that would come and set things right between God and man. John doesn't re record the, ver the birth of Jesus, but he tells, as we read this morning, of the light. That Jesus was from the beginning and Jesus was the light that came into the world. And in John 1.29 we read, The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Andrew recognized this, he studied scripture, and he knew that Jesus was the Messiah or the Christ. This one you can spell either with an E or an I. You know what's Emmanuel. <clears throat> Isaiah 7:14, which was written hundreds of years before Daniel, says, Therefore the Lord Himself will give you a sign, the virgin, young woman, will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. Now your translations there may say virgin, they may say young woman, because it was a young woman who could be a virgin. So why do we put virgin in there in the scriptures? Well, we know it after the fact, because Matthew writes in chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Who was this prophet he's talking about? Isaiah. The virgin... So we know that that young woman was a virgin. Will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. God literally came from heaven to earth to save mankind. He came in the form of Jesus Christ, His only Son. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be on His shoulders, and He will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So what do you think these say? Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. And Prince of Peace. You can go sit down. You don't have to stay up here the whole time. Those are yours to put on your tree. John 1.12 says, Yet to all... <coughs> who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, he, he gave the right to become children of God. What a wonderful thing that is. What a great fact that we have a counselor, one to guide us, one who to show us the way. That He is mighty God Himself. That we don't have to worry. That God Himself became man and died for us. That He is our everlasting Father. Forever and ever and ever. This life is just a blink. But we will spend eternity if we believe in Jesus Christ as God's children. Prince of Peace. The Prince of the Kingdom of God who brings peace to all men. Ephesians 4.10 says, He who has descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe, to make things right. Jesus John 1, verses 1 through 4 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light came to the world one dark and dreary night. God fulfilled His covenants because He chose to love us. 
He loved us enough that He sent Jesus to die and set things right. John 1, 8 says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Reading back in Luke chapter 2, verse 11, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom His favor rests. Jesus Christ came as a lowly servant, as the light of the world. He came to a manger, a feeding trough, and we should feed off of Him to learn more about Him, to learn what His names mean, to learn His ways, so that we can be like Christ, so that we can walk in His footsteps. Disciples came about long before the word Christian ever came about because we had to make a choice if we were going to follow after Jesus Christ or not. If we were going to take on His ways and teach others. And then when we started acting and behaving like Christ, the name Christian came about. So I challenge you to tell others about the reason for the season. Some other names of Jesus. I don't know how many kids I'd have. <laughs> Never know. We had a lot last night. And these are things that you can ponder on. The gate, because He is the true gate for the sheep. Alpha and Omega, He is the beginning, He is the end. He is the Son of Man. He is mankind. He was born a man to die a man so that He could be someone that we could have an advocate with to the Father that experienced everything that we have. That He is man, that He can take our debt upon His shoulders and take our place. He is the Good Shepherd. He leads and guides us to still waters. He restores our soul. He is the advocate. He is the one that teaches us the way. He is the bread of life. The one that we eat on more than we do our physical food, but to be spiritually alive. He is the Lord of lords, the bright and morning star, the root of David, King of kings, the Son of God. And he was a servant. He came as a humble servant to teach us the way. To show us that we should love one another because God loved us. If you do not know the peace that surpasses all understanding. If you don't experience that joy that makes you just want to shout out and sing because it's Jesus' birthday. Then all you've got to do is humble yourselves before him. Repent. Change your way of thinking and say, God, thank you for loving me so much that you would send Jesus. As we celebrate His birth today, I hope that you will think about the names of Jesus. And girls, will you help me one more time? We have ornaments for all of you. If you'll give everybody one, and then if there's more, you can give them one for a second. These are little ornaments that have different names, so you'll get a random name, and maybe it's something that you can ponder about and spend time. This is the day that we celebrate the birth, life, and death of Jesus Christ. The one true way, the love, the light of the world, that God sent for all mankind to light up the darkness in a time when there was no hope, God said, I love you. And He did it through Jesus Christ. So we're going to sing some hymns now. And if you'll stand with us, and if you have a favorite, then shout it out and we'll sing your favorite, hopefully. <laughs>